Hey there toy collector friends and Star Trek fans alike. Welcome back to the channel. I'm the time traveling toy collector and this is the Star Trek official Starships collection special issue Delta Flyer as featured in the Star Trek series Voyager. Um, it's one of the large ships. It's produced by Eagle Moss uh, and Hero Collector and uh, it's part of my pre-existing catalogue so this isn't something that I've sourced um, in the great Eagle Moss hiatus period as I'm semi-jokingly referring to it so obviously as many of you will be aware Eagle Moss are currently um, in, a, in, in a phase of um, potential administration it does sound quite uh, favourable from some of the people online who have inside and background tracks on this that we are going to see some movement on the existing stock um, there's already been some movement and you'll see in another one of my videos if you collect Doctor Who figurines specifically the TARDIS consoles you'll have noticed that I was able um, to get my hands on the 11th Doctor's junk TARDIS console um, not to be confused with the 11th Doctor's junk that's ever so slightly different and not uh, one of the videos on this channel um, but they are starting to filter through um, so do watch some of your top online outlets um, I've not seen them in stores yet but stores are still sort of edging forwards out of the uh, out of the dark so I'm just going to rotate this round a little for you um, the Delta Flyer uh, yeah, it was a concept piece it was a it was technically built up by uh, Tom Paris, etc., uh, on board the USS Voyager as a sort of customized um, shuttle pod that was uh, changed and updated and upgraded uh, using resources that I'm sure they could ill afford. But hey ho, don't let uh, don't let circumstances get in the way of a good story. Um, if we assume it was a good story, um, but I like this model. I think it's a very nice model. Um, again, it wasn't something I was originally going to go for. Um, but I think it's it's I really like uh, I really like it. I really like the detailing around it. Um, I really like the uh, use. I'd say sp uh, sparse use because it is quite sparse, um, but effective use of the sort of trans uh, transparent plastic, the transparent plastic, whatever you want to call it, um, around the nacelles. Really, um, there's a part of me that kind of wishes we'd had something similar. Or a bit more opaque in the cockpit area um, given we've got such an ornate design for the cockpit so I think there was a little bit of a missed opportunity there um, but aside from that yeah I think it's a really lovely and really nice model which we will get in hand momentarily I will just say like all of them I don't always show these but like all of the Star Trek Starships collections official that does come with a um, a lovely glossy magazine just open up random pages that then gives you um, some of the detailing of the build quality and the background notes made and the design of the ships and it you know it makes for a really good a really good interesting read if you are someone who is interested in um, more than just what you get with the series excuse me while I readjust uh, as I simply I slightly knocked the camera and made it tilt down Anywho, let's get the ship in hand so you can have a better look at it. Um, it's one of those that feels quite sturdy when you put it into the um, into the uh, the cradle that holds it up. Uh, as you'll know from some of my other videos, if you've seen them, uh, that isn't always the case. So we can see the illustrations there of the registration 74656, the uh, familiar red stripe of the um, Federation there, uh, some lovely as I mentioned, some lovely transparent plastic detailing around the nacelle area. Um, it doesn't really follow through, but then the nacelles don't follow through in that traditional sense. There's the rear docking port or entry ramp, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, the detailing uh, underneath the ship, which again, I think is really, really nice. I think it's really, really well done. Um, I strongly suspect that some of the paint decals don't quite comply with screen accuracy um, but again this is a mass-produced piece and hand painted we're led to believe so I'm grateful that they've managed to get some of this within the lines because that's uh, another common criticism of Eagle Moss and Hero Collector products is that they don't always get the paint apps uh, where they should be 
but on this model that doesn't seem to be yet uh, a problem they all seem to be exactly where they should be for which i am particularly grateful you can see some of that lovely green detailing in amongst some of those exposed panels there um, which gives it a little bit of a, a borg feel but there we are um, we've got the delta flyer information at the front there along with the uss voyagers registry to show that this is a ship um, an ancillary ship of the uss voyager same on the second side very very much follows through in terms of the same design on the other side so there's not an awful lot additional here um, to show you on the on the second side of it um, it's quite a weighty piece as ever uh, there's an element of resin an element of resin and an element of plastic the translucent plastic there to give it a little bit of gleam shine and detailing um, I, I don't have a problem with the matte paint around the cockpit area um, and I fully appreciate it would have been a step too far to have that completely transparent because they'd have had to have detailed the cockpit which I appreciate on a model of this scale size class and price point would not be realistic but that's why I just wonder whether a hint of something a little bit more translucent um, even if we can't properly see inside so it could be opaque would have been just would have elevated the model slightly of course we'll never know because it didn't happen um, but some of these are still available um, for relatively recent price points actually um, remember it is a special issue special edition size um, so it's uh, much as you can see it's much larger than the uh, sort of the standard monthly releases that Eagle Moss did for the Star Trek collection um, as a result of that perfectly understandably and this isn't a criticism nor a complaint um, the Delta Flyer obviously does not scale logically this version with its mothership the USS Voyager because it couldn't do the USS Voyager is an XL edition ship um, because I only really collect the XL edition ships and one or two of the uh, special editions if they take my fancy um, but yeah so there was no way really that was ever realistically apologies when I get that into the cradle now let's get this back up um, that it was ever really going to fit in a, in terms of scale alongside the USS Voyager but um, you may have just seen there, as I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit for you there, um, again, reattaching it to the cradle. It does, it, it all, I mean, they generally all give me hairy moments when I'm doing it. Um, this one originally didn't. <laughs> uh, but of course, as soon as you put a camera on it, everything's slightly more heightened. And just trying to slot those nacelles into the cradle there. Very simple, very easy to do. Um, but of course, not so much when uh, the camera's rolling. So that's quite typical. Um, but as you can see, the light does sort of, I hope you can see the light does hit these translucent pieces of plastic quite well. The detailing is very nice. Um, I personally think that as a standalone piece, as part of the larger Starships collection, it really is an excellent addition to that Star Trek range. And of course it is, well, I say of course, people will possibly disagree with me and, and quite rightly too but it is one of those ships that becomes um, a signature ship uh, in in the in the Voyager and the Voyager series which is one of the reasons I think I've, I've included it I don't think I'd classify it as a hero ship um, but I might do for the sake of the the playlists but um, it certainly is a a popular and recurring supporting artist ship um, which was something I think um, we didn't see an awful lot of in Star Trek Voyager because of the nature of the show. So that's perfectly, perfectly fair enough. Um, so does the USS Voyager's um, Delta Flyer have a place on your shelf? Well, again, we don't know the future of Eagle Moss uh, productions, production lines. Um, even if people do pick up some of the pre-existing stock and start to sell that, um, I'd still be concerned as to whether or not previously produced ships would ever be remolded, remade and re resold. Um, it's not impossible. Uh, I don't speak with any degree of inside information. I'm just surmising from a business point of view that if they are going to, if these companies that have bought up the stock 
are going to then start releasing it, possibly under their own branding, who knows. Um, they may well wish to do that afresh. Um, and, you know, that might not be any bad thing from our perspective. So I think, you know, between between its limited, current limited availability and the uncertainty of the future, if you are a collector of these, then for me, I can only advise you to go and pick one of these up, scour the internet. I would, of course, caveat that with be mindful of scalpers. You don't want to be forking out 60, 70, possibly more dollars or, or pounds for this. Um, if you could pick it up at a convention, for example, uh, a, a film and comic con convention or a toy fair, um, for around a 30, 40, maybe 50 on the outside price mark um, at this stage. So I'd be looking for that. Again, you might be lucky on, on online auction sites. Somebody might have a few of them and be looking to let some of them go. They might be willing to do that for a reasonable price. Um, not everyone who's in the secondary market is out to make exorbitant amounts of money and capitalise on, on, the, on the minimal amount of these ships. Um, but alas, some are. So just be mindful, shop around, by all means shove them on your watch list um, whilst you're investigating. And if you do see it, my advice would be snap it up. However, you don't have to take that advice and only you really know whether the Delta Flyer has a place on your shelf. But certainly for me, I'm very glad that it does. I hope this video has been useful. I hope it's uh, given you a close look uh, at the detailing and the size and the uh, flavour of the Delta Flyer so that if you are considering adding it to your collection, you're now better placed to make those decisions. And if that is the case, then please do hit the, the, uh, the like button below. And while you're there, have a little smash of the old subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a future Star Trek or similar um, themed toy or model video. There are some more coming up with a range of historical and slightly less historical uh, and a few hysterical um, toys through time up to the present and including the present day. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much for giving me over, uh, you know, 12, 13, 14 minutes of your time today. Uh, there's lots of channels you could be watching and I'm delighted that you chose to come and have a little look at mine. Um, have a look at some of my playlists. They may be of interest to you. They may not. Um, but if they are, hopefully you'll see something that uh, inspires you, excites you or, or encourages you to shop around and see what else you can buy. Um, you have been, as I mentioned, a fantastic audience. I have been the time-travelling toy collector. This has been the Delta Flyer from the Star Trek official Starships collection from uh, Eagle Moss and Hero Collector. And it only remains for me to say that a toy, a thing of beauty rather, is a toy forever. You take care and one to beam up. Mm -hmm.